Uh, okay, so today we'll talk about uh, the base of the skull. Base of the skull uh, begins from the incisor teeth all the way back to the external occipital protuberance. Now, talking specifically about the teeth, um, these are the upper teeth, uh, or they are also called the maxillary teeth because they are attached to the maxilla. Here, uh, we've got the uh, central incisor teeth and lateral incisor teeth to the right and to the left. This is the canine tooth and uh, these are the two premolar teeth, first and second upper premolar teeth and these are the three molar teeth, first, second and third upper molar teeth. This is the heart palate. Uh, it's composed of two major parts. Uh, this is the uh, palatine process uh, of the maxillary bone uh, or the maxilla and uh, this is the horizontal plate of the palatine bones. Uh, this is the intermaxillary suture and this is the incisive foramen. It provides passage uh, for the nasopalatine nerve, a terminal branch of the descending palatine artery and it also provides passage for the palatal branch of the facial artery. Uh, this is the palato-maxillary suture. And uh, here, uh, in the palatine bones, uh, we've got the uh, greater palatine foramina to the right and to the left, and also lesser palatine foramina. We may have uh, one or two lesser palatine foramina on each side. In this case, we have two, uh, if you can focus. See, we have two lesser um, palatine foramina on each side and uh, the greater uh, palatine foramina is for passage of the greater palatine uh, vessels and nerve and again the lesser palatine foramina for passage of the uh, lesser uh, palatine vessels and nerve. The posterior part of each palatine bone uh, unite at the posterior nasal spine uh, which provides attachment for the musculus uvale. Uh, now, anteriorly, uh, we have got the uh, anterior nasal spine and uh, uh, from here it becomes the vomer bone and from here it becomes the perpendicular part of the ethmoid. But for the exam, if there's a spot on this, we'd say that this is the vomer bone. Uh, now, in this uh, base of the skull, talking about the sphenoid bone, uh, so this is the uh, vomer bone, by the way. Uh, this is the vomer, not the sphenoid. Uh, anyway, uh, so the vo vomer bone divides the uh, nasal cavity into the right and left uh, nasal cavities. Uh, okay, so uh, th th these are the medial and lateral uh, pterygoid plates of the sphenoid bone. Okay, so uh, this is the palatine, these are the palatine bones. They go like that, again, like that. Uh, but these are the medial and lateral uh, pterygoid plates of the sphenoid, and this is the vomer bone. Now, talking about uh, pterygoid process uh, of the sphenoid, um, this is the uh, medial pterygoid plate of the sphenoid, uh, provides attachment for the superior constrictor muscle of the pharynx. And uh, this is the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid, providing uh, attachment uh, for the medial and lateral pterygoid muscles. Um, as we said, in the inferior border of the medial pterygoid plate of the sphenoid, anteriorly we've got the projection, uh, which is called the pterygoid hymalus, providing uh, attachment for the pterygomandibular ligament and also the uh, tensor villipalatine muscle. Uh, this is the pterygoid fossa, okay, this fossa. This is the pterygoid fossa, it's also called scaphoid fossa, uh, and uh, this also provides attachment for the tensor villipalatine muscle. Uh, now, still talking about uh, the uh, sphenoid bone, um, posterior lateral to the uh, lateral uh, pterygoid plate of the sphenoid, we've got uh, the uh, foramen ovale. Uh, this is for passage of the mandibular nerve, uh, accessory uh, meningeal artery, um, lesser petrosal nerve, and emissary vein. We can memorize them better as male. 
Uh, and then posterior lateral to uh, the foramen ovale, we've got the foramen spinosum, uh, which is for passage of the middle meningeal artery, uh, and also the emissary vein, and also the nervous spinosum, so we can better memorize that as man. Posterior lateral to the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid, we've got the foramen ovale. Posterior lateral to that, we've got the foramen spinosum. And finally, posterior lateral to that, we've got the spine of the sphenoid for attachment of the sphenomandibular ligament. Okay, so um, uh, the, these are the uh, for, for, uh, foramen lacerum uh, on each side. Uh, okay, so uh, they are formed by the uh, sphenoid, uh, occipital, and also temporal bones. Uh, they are the most medial foramina in the skull, and uh, they are for passage uh, of the uh, emissary veins, okay? And uh, then posterior uh, to the spine uh, of the sphenoid, uh, we've got the carotid canals on each side. These are the carotid canals uh, for passage of the internal carotid artery. And then uh, posterior to that, uh, we've got uh, the jugular foramina, okay? They are much larger, jugular foramina, and they are irregular in shape. So as we said, this is the uh, jugular foramen, uh, providing passage for the sigmoid sinus, which will become the internal jugular vein. Um, and it also provides passage for the inferior petrosal uh, sinus, uh, also providing passage for the cranial nerves 9, 10, and 11, the cranial nerve 9 being um, the glossopharyngeal nerve, and uh, of course, um, cranial nerve 10 being the vagus nerves, and uh, cranial nerve 11, the accessory nerve. Uh, now, uh, talking about the mandibular fossa, uh, okay, so here is the uh, mandibular fossa. Um, it uh, articulates uh, with the head or the condylar uh, process of the mandible uh, to uh, form the TM joint or the temporal mandibular joint, which is synovial joint. Um, and then uh, here we've got the external acoustic meatus, or it's also called external auditory meatus. Uh, external auditory meatus, and uh, then we've got the styloid process. Uh, okay, so here is the styloid process, and this is the mastoid process, providing attachment for the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Uh, the styloid process provides attachment uh, for the stylo mandibular ligaments and stylo hyoid ligaments, and also uh, three muscles uh, stylo hyoid muscle, uh, stylo glossus muscle, and also stylo uh, pharyngeus uh, muscle. And uh, between these two, uh, we've got a, a foramen, uh, which is called the stylomastoid foramen. Now talking about uh, the um, occipital bone in the base of the skull, uh, this is the, its basilar part. Okay, basilar part. Um, these are the condylar part and the sequamous part. Uh, now in the basilar part, uh, we've got a very important launch mark, uh, which is called the pharyngeal tubercle. The atlas bone, which is the first cervical vertebra, articulates with the occipital condyle at the atlanto occipital joint. And uh, this is the foramen magnum uh, for passage of the medulla oblongata and uh, also for passage of the spinal part of the accessory nerve. So how does this occur? Uh, if this is the uh, spinal cord. Uh, from the spinal cord, we've got some fibers, uh, which are the spinal part of the accessory nerve. Uh, they uh, go upwards. Uh, to pass through the foramen magnum and then uh, in the cranium or the in uh, cranial cavity uh, they will fuse uh, with the uh, cranial fibers uh, of the accessory nerve uh, to eventually form uh, the uh, accessory nerve which is the cranial nerve 11 and then uh, that will pass through the uh, jugular uh, foramen okay And we also don't have to forget that the foramen magnum uh, provides passage for the right and left vertebral arteries. Um, these are the condylar canals for passage of the condylar emissary veins. And here, um, this is the hypoglossal canal. And again, here, the hypoglossal canal. But these are the jugular foramina. See, they are much larger and irregular in shape. But this is uh, very smaller and circular. This is hypoglossal canal for passage of the hypoglossal nerve. So as we said, this is uh, foramen ovale, foramen spinosum, uh, spine of uh, sphenoid, uh, carotid canal, uh, digital foramen, 
This is jugular fossa and uh, hypoglossal canal. This is the external occipital protuberance, a projection on the squamous part of the occipital bone. And right on the horizontal line with the external occipital protuberance, we've got the superior nuchal line. This is for attachment of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, trapezius muscle, occipitalis, which is the occipital belly of the occipitofrontalis, and also the saplenius capitis muscle. The external occipital protuberance provides attachment for the nuchal ligament and the trapezius muscle. Uh, this is the inferior nuchal line, uh, which doesn't provide many attachments. And finally, this is the external occipital crest or median nuchal line for attachment of the nuchal ligaments.